Hello, welcome to another Dragonfall chat with us today is of course Josh, my, my, my lovely co-host, and then the award-winning painter, Sam Lenz. The guy, the hey, guy, I, I, yeah, so. Uh, Sunglasses at night. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we, can, we can stop with this now. It's kind of glaring me and I'm dying. So yours look really uh, cool because it reflects your screen and you have two white squares where your eyes. Like I've got some, this is kind of like a max headroom thing going on a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. All yeah. the tech in the back. Man, yeah. that's a lot of hot tech. I like it. Yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah, mine I, off. It, it, it'll, we'll show this at WGN at 2, 2 a.m. when we hack through. Do, do you, ever, you, ever, you ever hear about that? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, You've got a lot to talk about. We, we have already <laughs> gotten off topic. Fantastic. Uh, so Sam, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, right now you're living on a farm. Tell us about yes. the farm. <laughs> well, I live out in the, out in the countryside, just nestled away. It's a very beautiful place. It's kind of weird and random because there's a lot of country stuff that happens here. I live, I rent the house on farmland. It's an active farm. Ooh. Got farmers showing up randomly and an old man that lives in one of the sheds outside who's here more than I am. I was told he would be here sometimes, but I think we need to evaluate some definitions. But he's cool. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to play Warhammer, which is the biggest problem. <laughs> he hits me as kind of a Magic the Gathering kind of guy because he, he's never wearing a shirt. Um, Did you say he lives in a shed? Yes. In uh, the hunting be your quarantine pal. I mean, you guys so, don't see anybody else, so it's perfect. This is the thing, though, is that first I'm like, this old man lives in a shed. He never wears a shirt and just traipses around in cutoffs. Then I, you know, I chat with him. The more I get to know about him, he's a retired accountant. I think he owns the house that I'm renting. He's he's just living out some kind of life. But it's it's country stuff, you know. He's living that like Huckleberry Finn kind of uh, lifestyle, and it's all like family members owning all the property around. And, and it's weird. I was I was I'll be moving in a year, but I'm yeah. just gonna enjoy the time that I have. I was waiting for one of our uh, bi-weekly Warhammer sessions for just this dude just to show up wearing your skin. And I'm still waiting for that, so. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. I know. I think they're still trying to eye me up. I, I make for a bit of a harder target just because I'm tall and, and not light and mid-heavy, mm -hmm. but... I mean, what, what am I compared to a bunch of hillbillies with machine guns? So your your workout regimen is just to be a difficult, more difficult murderer. I get it. Yes. Like, yeah, good for you. Um, is, you can't just give up out there. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your past, because you did start as um, in your artistic endeavors professionally as a tattoo artist before you were a miniature painter, correct? Yeah. Um, how, how was that transition? So like, I, I kind of want to ask some stuff that like we can talk about your awards and stuff and your golden demons and your dragon slayers or whatever, but I think it's, it's time to get to know Sam Lenz. Get to know Sam Lenz as much as I know Sam Lenz, which is- Yeah, behind all the all these trophies and gold medals and- Yeah, there's a man. This fence work of distractions. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a, just a boy from the country. But anyway, I, I worked at a tattoo shop. I'd always been into Warhammer, but- I saw my time at the shop as I, I didn't go to art school either, but that mm -hmm. was my kind of formal education on on artwork. It made me ten times the artist I was. I was just more focused on what I was doing with color. I started learning color theory, um, and the miniature paint all all kinds of artwork complement each other. And I, I've always been drawing and painting my whole life, which led me. I did well in the tattoo industry and then towards the end of that I, I was taking commissions and you know my I live in Wisconsin so there's some downtime at, at tattoo shops in Wisconsin if you can believe that yeah especially the six months out of the year when it's when it's snowing but uh <laughs> sorry I just got a, a text um I forgive you. yeah yeah it's so I had a lot of downtime and I would I chose to spend that time making paintings painting Warhammer models and all the same techniques that you that I use on a two-dimensional surface, I use them on miniatures as well. Um, and that's where I, I met Uncle Adam in that situation. 
So Sorry, with the, I said two dimensional being skin in that situation. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, that's more like a like a soft cone. The human body is, is like a very soft cone. But yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. You know, having an going in there with an illustrative talent and knowledge of of colors, and then practicing that on human flesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. You definitely you have to have a very steady hand, and it, you still you still have a tattoo gun. Yes, cool. I got a few. So what do you want? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm sure the neck I'm, and below the sleeves. That's it. So the one of the reasons I brought that up is I know of some tattoo artists, and their number one pet peeve is how much is this going to cost? Is what people ask all of the time. Yeah. And when you were a commission painter, like so, this isn't it, it, like it's how long did it take before you could just set hard prices and there wasn't like the automatic barter check every single time somebody wanted something uh that that's a tricky one yeah just like general advice you have to understand your own value as someone who can do something that someone else would hire you to do equate that you know why is your time less valuable than the person who's coming and asking a service of you uh, just because it's artwork and it's you're good at it, so naturally it's fun. So you should do it for free because you want to draw butterflies on on my lower back. You you know, yeah. The people people. I think we've just decided on my tattoo you're gonna give me. So yeah, I'm so excited about it. So yeah, I I don't have any space on my lower back. So <laughs> perfect. We'll have to put a little mat with a teardrop around it on your cheek then i've got a i've got a lot of Man. space on my lower back I've got plenty <laughs> plenty uh, of real estate so how long um and also another thing about is was the the when you're doing tattoo work you're trying to move fast and when you're trying to commission paint you're trying to move fast correct or you're not trying to move fast when you're doing a tattoo like <laughs> it seems like you would you want to be timely about it, but sometimes moving fast, it takes a, a certain like steadiness because the needle is impacting the skin at a certain speed. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of uh, want to set a, a certain cruise control rate. But yes, you are, you are trying to estimate how much time will this take me, whether, whether I'm rushing or not, you know, how quickly can I get this done and, and looking good. Uh, it, it took me a long time to like realize my own value. Um, Cause that, yeah, the working at the shop, that was a lot of things being brand new to me, mm -hmm. but I, I hit a point with commissions where I was booked out a year in advance and people yeah, I was were still saying yes I, to that. I was like, all right, <laughs> time to raise the rates. Like, I, uh, I, I remember taking advantage of your low rates when we first met. So. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey. Glad, glad to be here. <laughs> so what? Oh, it's fine. No, it's it's fine, man. I, how how long did it take you to after you transitioned in that career to have like your first victories and start feeling like this is something like this is this is this is a career and not just like uh, a thing I'm doing for a couple of years. I don't know if that was ever in your head. Yeah, with the uh, the painting. Yeah. Yeah, when I was um, working at the tattoo shop, that was, that was kind of a boom in miniature painting uh, or miniature painters blogging. Um, and I, I found the, the blog Massive Voodoo run by Roman Lapot, a um, bunch of other artists appearing on there who were very talented. But I saw Roman Lapot's posts and he is teaching classes and doing, uh, doing weekend seminars and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is actually like a, a viable option. Like I have a lot to, I don't know how to get there. And you know, like I said, the transition of, I was still going to Adepticon when I worked at the tattoo shop, you know? So I was, I was aware of both things. And the more that I worked on commission pieces, the more I went to conventions, entered contests, made connections like talking to, to Matt, just more doors started opening. And I was I'm not sure where this is going to go, but the boss, uh, I can see a lot of doors opening and my boss chose to close down the tattoo shop and I had a decision to find a 
you know, another job in the same field or continue the trajectory painting miniatures. Um, I had made friends with, with Uncle Adam and I'm not sure if we shot any videos while I still worked at the shop, but it, they're very close together. And I feel like when you, when you worked at the shop, he was just starting up the channel. So yeah, yeah. it was like a year or two before you like jumped in on some videos, I think. So It, it used to be a club um, that yep. met at the comic book store across from the tattoo shop after the comic store uh, after hours. And yeah, he came in when I had, I had some of my models out on display. He knows what Warhammer is. And he's like, hey, you want to come over to the, these meetings? We call it Tabletop Minions. You know, it's like, I don't know, six or seven people total over there. And then that's what became the name of his channel. Yeah, a, a star was born. Uh, <laughs> Adam Loper, the famous sir. Yeah, I was playing um, Grand Theft Auto online with him last night. And he is delightful to play that game with because he'll accidentally hit a car and like apologize we didn't fire a single bullet we just like went on his yacht and 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 like we went on a roller coaster ride together he's so, living uh, a life he's it's yeah, like you're gonna play tony hawk with him he just wants to go down big hills <laughs> dude i want to go really fast it's yeah fun. i've watched him play on, on twitch and it is it is fun to watch him play and yeah be be around that guy it's it's great so with the, and uh, I'm sorry, Josh, do you have anything you want to interject? I, I feel like I've just been kind of hogging. I'm a, I'm a Sam hog. No, no, I'm, I'm just listening. It's good. Fascinating right. information. Fascinating. The guy with a pile of guitars just laying behind him that are like all <laughs> amazing. I'm so much more curious about, about Joshua than anything that we're, we're talking about. But. We can talk about guitars. We can talk about guitars, man. Yeah, right. I, I don't I don't know that anybody's been noticing or that enough people are watching these videos, but every every group of videos we've been shooting, I've been rotating the guitars out. So I, you got I, an organ back there? Or a it's a it's a Wurlitzer. Okay. Uh, Wurlitzer electronic piano. Okay. Um, you, don't care, you don't care about my synths and pedals? Come on, man. You can't really see them. I can't tell what that is. That that just looks like tech to me. I thought it was a naked computer. Those are all synths. Yeah, I didn't know you're a synth guy. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I'm not good at it, but it's fun. Should make me some ambient tracks for my YouTube videos. I stuff. actually started doing some of that for like if I ever wanted to do. Uh, and I I think we've talked about this. So I like game mastering. I game master for both you guys in two different groups, which is funny. Um, oh, you are yeah. in the other group. Warhammer yeah. meets Wyander. I hear things, things about the other plot group. points throughout the uh, months, but um, I am lazy. But <laughs> like, I was thinking about doing some stuff, maybe even for like this channel. But I just a lot of the people who do let's plays are just kind of like more theater kids than they are gamers, and like it just annoys me, you know? Like, dude, I I, I gotta get over, I gotta get over you, that. Yeah, sorry. I, I've complimented you and just to like put it out there alive, like Matt's a really good GM. I, I can tell the level of uh, past like experience that you have when you create situations like. Yeah, cause I'm just making it up. So much it. fun. It's, it's a lot of fun to, to play with you. Like um, I did reuse the um, Chimera babies from your guys' thing. I'm not gonna tell who came first, who's the chicken or egg, but uh, everyone's happy about that. Oh, that's um, fine. Yeah, I expect there to be a lot of overlap. Yeah. So um, with that, I, I got a little, we got a little sidetrack there. The guitars are, the, they're, they're metal on purpose for you today, buddy. So. Oh, yes. I like, I could cut myself. All those guitars have really great aerodynamic properties. <laughs> and also the red one also looks very fast as well. So. <laughs> Yeah. That's what this is all about, though. I listen to, like, I pass my time with a lot of podcasts, and I'm more interested in the banter and weird stories around these people that that come out, so. Yeah, when things are more conversative, I think it's good, like, um, and that's why we're doing, like, a little bit more of a long-form video with this one, um, and yeah. I'm just going to put it up, like, the day that Dragonfall would have been, so you better be a big draw, you son of a bitch. That's hey, I'll, I'll share it out everywhere. I'll, I'll try my hardest. Um, Don't be mad at me. Yeah, we'll make Adam. We'll make Adam do something. We'll just dance in front of a camera for us. Yeah, just put his face on the in the thumbnail. Just have a picture of Adam. 
Just I have one. I mean, I, 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 I've got, so there's the, so this video and the video, I, I'm going to do one with Adam as well. But um, A, it's kind of like, like I know you guys really well and it's kind of hard to come up with questions that I, it's almost like I already know the answer to all these and I'm just kind of leading you a little bit. Yeah. So, and with that stuff, it's also like, uh, putting up a YouTube video about a dude about YouTube is like, it's like maybe too meta for me. Like I don't, like I don't, and he's done so many videos and I've seen all of them because I moderate his stuff that it's like, what, what do you get the man that has everything? Like, what do I ask this guy? You know, like it's, maybe we yeah. talk to him about stuff that doesn't come up in the videos. Yeah, that's true. We could. Yeah. I mean, that's, if he's I'm be doing, we're, we're, we're doing some of that stuff now with like your, your your history, Sam, which will segue with me into. Do you have any any? So since you've gone into this career, have you had any wrong turns <laughs> that you would uh, warn, warn others from? If I lay it all out, it's it's it's. Um, you don't have to name names. Don't have to name names. Don't have to. You know, we don't we don't need socials. But uh, give me give me a spicy you can't anecdote. Name names. Yeah. Um. <laughs> God. So. I'll just, I'll hit a few like weird highlights, I guess. So the shop, the tattoo shop was closing down and I didn't exactly know what my, my options are going to be. I didn't know what to do. A uh, relationship I was in was ending. I ended up uh, moving in with my mom for a month and a half. All right. That's it. Month and a half. This don't, is don't, his mom's house. His mom's don't farm. Judge me. There was even, there was no bed. I was just sleeping on a wooden floor and I had some, uh, some commissions to paint and my mom's kind of a cat lady and they all got fleas at one point. So I have a memory of sweat dripping down my brow, fleas jumping on my legs and just trying to paint because I had no money. And I, and then the downstairs tenant stole all my money. <laughs> It was like, I don't know. It, I don't know why I didn't like stop and just get a normal job, but it, I just, I loved it that much. Uh, somehow I got through that. And then I moved into a house that uh, used to be like a drug house. It was like past its prime in decline. Half the people are sobering up, but the rent very cheap. Turns out a place with, with, uh, Plumbing on, on one story of the house, not on the one you live in, is very cheap to rent from. And there's, <laughs> there's writing on, on all the um, the cupboards and the refrigerator. I've been to parties there before where we just smash everything. Yeah. Like I, when I, when yeah. I was moving out of an apartment when I was 21, we uh, the, they sold the place and they were like, yeah, you're not getting any security deposit back or whatever. And we had a broken glass party. You would like, we would do, we just got all the, glass pbrs and every everything no cans no cans were allowed and you'd finish it you'd smash it and we'd uh move oh, out doing that. yeah yeah i had a lot of adventures in that place before i moved into it um good times but yeah I, it's not great to live in those times you know like it's not you want to be those like escape from them but yes yeah, please continue yeah there was a time when I had realized that like I am living in my back in the day. Like I was very aware that this is a characterful moment. I didn't know if I would become anything out of it, but mm -hmm. I knew I, I was like s s kind of going somewhere. But like I, I started, um, I didn't always have commissions at, at that point. And I started selling models on eBay and I put a model up and all of a sudden I just paid my rent with a, a single sale. Again, rent very low. Yeah, everyone's wondering how low. One hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's so very yeah. low. You know, yeah. Paint, paint a picture. Yeah, that's less than one. That's like a quarter of, of a guitar a month. Um. Yeah, that was not a nice place, but it was a launch pad because yeah, it's like this is very affordable. I have space to breathe as far as creating competition pieces and entering and, and making a name for myself. Um, and then I started meeting people. I think I met Matt. Um, at I like changed your life, didn't I? That's you did, I man. And here we are still making changes. Um, I, I 
at, at Adepticon, I made an acquaintance with a painting studio in Utah. And up until oh. that point, I, what's that? I said, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't them? realize I, that. I warned, I warned you against that immediately. I was like, that sounds like a bad idea. And I didn't even have facts. We I don't have like, to name any names, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, they've they've been dragged so hard because of it just being terrible. So it's fine. I, I lasted uh, three weeks out there, but I, the moral of the story there is you don't have to hit your wagon. You don't have to swim in anyone when anyone else's wake. You just create your own momentum. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I soon realized that like me working for that place, that place wasn't the draw. It was me. You know, like people don't. They're, they're hiring that place. They're offering like a higher level of painting because this golden demon winter guy can come in and paint things for you. It's like, cut out the middleman. People will hire an award-winning painter on their own. Um, yeah, they will. Uh, sidestep back on that a little because I, I just want to add the information to because I know there are people that want to take a similar path into, into commission painting and stuff. I just want to say a quick bit of advice. When I first started out, I would plant a flag everywhere I could online. I would post in like two, at least two different forums. Yeah, I posted on Kumani or not, on uh, Daka Daka, that, that forum page. I put it up on like my blog. I had an eBay post. You know, I have like five things live at the same time and have them all linked back to the same source. And it was all free. Just just a, a bit of advice to, to people out there. Like there's so many... Uh, there's even more platforms to be putting your work on now. Um, this blog, samsonminis.blogspot.com? Yeah, I, I rarely blog on there. I mean, I, every once in a while, I'll put up something special just to, to keep it alive. Um, well, yeah, still, I mean, this is not bad. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a fun one. I you did pretty good. <laughs> A fun part about that is is limited. It's like I'm just gonna paint something with like six colors so I can get this done quickly, but spend time with these tones and make it look neat. Um, that's it's fun to have these kind of little uh, challenges or limits inside of your work. Cute little plinth. Did, did you get that from October? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I did get it from uh, Joe yeah. Orthober. Orthober Studios. Yeah, Orthober Studios. Yeah, he's uh he does great work. He and has donated stuff to the Dragonfall Foundation several times. So yes. Uh yeah, that's right. Was cool last year. So um what, so during all of this, what was your first victories then? Like did you do something like smaller stuff or did you go straight for it? Um victories. Awards. Award winning. Yeah, okay, true. I was like, I don't know, like career wise or painting wise. I don't care, man. You answer yeah. the question. A big, okay. Well, the, I mean, uh, award wise, the, the big, the kicker for me was attending Games Day 2008, seeing the Golden Demon contest, seeing where the bar was at, and then saying, okay, I can try this. And then coming back the next year with like three things that belong to my orc army, but I, I threw off the, uh, there's always a quality versus quantity equation. So I was like, what happens if I just try to make something look as, as nice as I can and forget about, you know, the time and adding to my army and the constant growth that a, a horde army needs and stuff. So I brought some things to game stay and squeaked away with the bronze in the unit category. Nice. And yeah, from, I was so excited. I didn't expect that. Like, so I was, I was all fired up after that. And then I heard about this convention, Adepticon, and they didn't have Crystal Brush at the time they called their contest the Rogue Demon. And yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was that was that that was for a while. I mean, uh, Crystal Brush yeah. is like because Adepticon was so popular, that was probably it's maybe it's not as the idea, but like it was when things got real popular, people like kind of think that it was always the Crystal Brush, but that's not the case. I mean it's been around for 15 years, so whatever. Right. I remember reading about Adepticon and issues of White Dwarf. There'd be like a page or two on it. Um, yeah. 
I used yeah. to volunteer back in the day before I was a vendor. So, ooh, climbing that ladder. Oh, I'm I've... and descending the ladder now. <laughs> yeah, shoots and ladders, man. 2020. Um, but yeah, so I had all my confidence up and my work prepared, and I brought like five things and I won nothing at that uh rogue demon competition yeah yeah so I was sad for like 10 or 12 hours then um I started working for the my local hobby shop the chimera hobby shop in Appleton Wisconsin mm -hmm. uh they have a big huge booth at Gen Con every year you can yeah, see I get the a, yellow clearance sign that's yeah I get a bunch of weird RPGs from them every year yeah well, oh I guess not this god year. It goes so yeah. deep. And, yeah. Yeah. All the people that stuff I have never heard of, and like that, I, I'm usually pretty well versed. I'm like, what? Is, what is this trash? And I have to buy it. You know. <laughs> all he's got all the old uh, confrontation miniatures and stuff too. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. A good crew, and also at the at Gen Con, there's two different paint competitions happening. You have uh, Privateer Press does their P3 contest, and then there's the Gen Con Indie happening up, upstairs. So I would like run over on, on my lunch break and enter a contest and come back and yeah, started uh, getting some medals there. And then eventually I won a lot of best in category trophies and a, a best in show just over the, over the years. Um, but I was still only painting armies mainly I was I was using I had all this skill to win get these high accolades but I was then using that skill to just go quickly you know I, I can do all these edge highlights oh yeah so your your commissions were armies at that point yeah I, I would get single models here and there but it was still never at that level that I wanted to be at or it's like uh I want you, you know, you're paying all my uh, rank and file guys for like 20 bucks a piece and I'll give you like 80 for the, the general or something. Um, so yeah, was, and that, that was in that period of time when I was booked out for like a year and I was like, man, I'm just not getting uh, the work that I, wanna, that I want. And then uh, I realized, so I came back from working in Utah and I was like, all right, and this is uh that was such a nightmare man Four, three yeah. weeks three weeks you lasted that's three weeks i moved three times um <laughs> i bought a minivan to pack all my things into and move out there a you know, part of that story involves me watching my friend uh almost die on the couch from a drug overdose so i was like yeah, man. well i'll try i'll try going to uh utah but my intention was never to like live out there you weren't looking to be like a registered voter of utah yeah i wanted to kind of go back and forth between the two and what i was being offered seemed really nice and until the person i had arranged it with got fired the day i got my first paycheck and then i had to renegotiate everything and i, I checked it sounded out like things that. changed quickly very abruptly yes. in the deal there weren't any yeah. contract signs from from what i could tell so for, uh, for a while, I got sick of this metaphor, but I'll, I'll bring it up on the on video. I would say to people, it was like having someone, not only were my dreams crushed, but they were ground into a powder and blown into my eyes, like some kind of South American abduction. Like, yeah. So I came back again at, at an absolute low, and I, but I realized I'm like, you will attract whatever you put out. If I want to be painting single miniatures, I should paint single miniatures and put them out there. Again, mm -hmm. drawing inspiration from Roman Lapot, seeing how he just does what he loves. And that's one of the philosophy I'm teaching these days is trying to trick people into just like, just go with your, uh, with whatever you love, like just follow what you enjoy doing and forget about all these expectations and judgment, but it's a trick to just get people to do their, make their best work. Once, you know, when you're like doing what you're fully invested in. Um, so I made this like custom miniature and I did all this sculpting on it. And uh, 
has made something like truly unique and I put all, you know, all kinds of time into it and then put it up on eBay and it never sold. Still really? it. <laughs> Another moment when sometimes you look right, back right, at right, that right. ocean. And it's just kept coming, didn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it never, never, it never stopped. Um, and even though a lot, some of that stuff is not your fault, like you must have just been blaming yourself a little bit though, like. Yeah, well, naturally when something goes wrong, you, you think I'm an idiot. You know, I can't really blame all the, the people around me. It's my fault for thinking that this, you know, X, Y, and Z were all good ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also like happy for those experiences though. And yeah, you you have a depth of things that you can go back to and look like, hey, it could be worse. I've been there. There's no fleas biting your ankles at the moment. So, no. Yeah. God, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, man. And now where I'm at, it's it's taken 10 years, I think, nine, nine or 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm finally like very happy with where I'm at. I feel a little bit like um, like people would come up to me at conventions and say like, wow, you're, you're Sam Lenz, you're the guy from videos and stuff. But like, it was always, it's like band practice. You know, you spend 95% of your time just playing with your like yourself or your two friends or whatever. And uh, I never felt that like recognition or didn't notice that these tabletop minions views had like videos had tens of thousands of views and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's finally like, it's strange. I mean, even as dudes moderator, I've had people come up to me and that's, that's, that's the next thing. Like, yeah, yeah, that's weird. It's, still, it's like not a, not a big deal. The, the only thing I'm trying to say is that it feels nice to know that I've had a positive effect. Um, yeah. and that was that was what I was always telling myself. I'm like the the best thing that I can that I have to share with the world is painting is my my strongest talent. It's the most positive way I can relate to the the world out there. So I was happy to make those videos with Adam. It also you know coming from being dirt poor, knowing that there are other people out there who don't have access uh, to you know certain things. Now it's a lot of it's available on, on YouTube and stuff, but. Sure. Are you almost kind of jealous that the tutorials and stuff like that, that like the kind of stuff that you put out there to help people, do you wish you had that? You think it would have shaved off some of your progression time? Yeah, I, I wish that there were resources out there. The only advice I ever got was uh, painting with a friend. I was like, man, how do you get your paint so smooth like that? And he's like, just add water to it. Yeah, I know, like when I was I, a kid, I bought a, I was in this cave in and then I got a doom wheel and then I just, I, I got on AOL and some people were just like pin it. And I was like, I don't know what that means. And I just stopped. I so just stopped. when I was a kid and I'm a little older than you guys, uh, <clears throat> there wasn't internet at all. There wasn't AOL. There, there were, there was nothing. So I would, I, I bought minis, uh, yeah, for use your imagination stuff. To... and I didn't know I didn't know anything you try to try to get things to stay together with two-part epoxy uh, mm -hmm. pinning what's that and and all I had was testers enamel paints yeah and I I didn't know to thin them <laughs> I, I don't even know the same things yeah yeah um so yeah that it's, yeah trick. but like hey man I I didn't have the the net either and I was even way like behind the curve from all of my like classmates and stuff. That's the one thing that yeah, I'm a this age that I am. I wish that I had YouTube sooner because the the acceleration that you can see from like in the the talent pool um, and in miniature painting as a whole has just taken this like upward trajectory in skill and as as well as uh, popularity. It's it's cool. I, I'm I like being a, a part you're, of that. You're, I think you're a part of that, man. I mean, you're. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why. But like everyone, check out Sam's videos. Everyone who's seeing this already knows who Sam Lens is. Well, probably you came from his stuff to see more of him. I also love that you kind of dress like a Streets of Rage character, like during all your videos. You got like fingerless, knuckleless gloves, 
and uh, it's 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 pretty good, man. It's pretty oh, especially good. I that's why I call myself Sandlot's artwork on this because I have my own YouTube channel that's yeah. like uh, four weeks old at this point, and yeah, I had a, a thumbnail session where I was like, I got to take a bunch of pictures of myself, so I put on like my leather jacket and got all my weapons and sunglasses and. One of the weapons you use is the, that's how I dress. Like I, I come from like a, the DIY, like crust punk kind of uh, basement show community. Everybody looks like a fucking Mad Max character in that. You got like shoelaces around their head and like, you know, staple your clothes together intentionally, kind of shit. So, well, you did use the Dragonfall axe in one of your thumbnails. You did win that. You won the Dragonfall best of two years in a row, right? And then you were oh, like, yeah, I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. And you were back to back. And then you're like, I'm not going to, like, I want to, I want someone else to win, which I thought was very, very kind of you, man. You know, there was a cash prize in line and you're like, let's let somebody else win. You know, like, it was cool. Um, so with those, like, so how many miniatures, I, I know I've asked you this personally, and like how many miniatures do you, you keep of your own stuff? Do you, do you only keep the winners and try to sell the rest? Do you do much eBay anymore? I have a big cartel page with a, a bunch of models for sale. Just Sam Lenz artwork on a mm -hmm. big cartel. But yeah, it's, it was like half and half. Some of my competition entries were commissions. Some were uh, personal pieces. Um, about, I mean, recently, a lot more of what I paint is just for me because I've been making Patreon content, but sure. the like general answer to in the last 10 years, you know, how much of that was for you? Uh, maybe 15, 20%. Okay, I got you. That's still a lot of miniatures because you have thousands of babies. Yes. Oh man, like like seeds to the wind. And it, it makes me happy knowing my models are all over the world. You're and like a spider. Zone, like, yeah. Um, and most of them die, if you think about it, at some point. So you never know what happens. You just put your little baby in the mailbox and <laughs> never, rarely see it again. It's happened like four times, maybe. Really? You've got, you got stumbling across, across your, your children in the wild? That's pretty cool. People, oh, yeah, wow. sometimes uh, someone will buy a model of mine from someone else. I got, I got that. Like, I had a guy hire me to paint the gash, which is this mm -hmm. huge detailed undead character and then like a month and a half later someone's like hey i bought that piece from uh so and so and or more probably he's wondering if i wanted to paint the some extra parts that i left off of it yeah but he sent it to me and it was in this like glass case and like just being well looked after it found that, a good home it found a good home I've, it, I've I mean, also, he bought it a month and a half later and hopefully it wasn't in an estate sale <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> I, I've also um, had my models sent back to me so I could enter them in a competition. Oh, like, all right, man, I'm painting this now, but next, you know, I'll be hitting you up around next March uh, to enter the Golden Demon. And I got one of my projects sent back to me and it's just all, it was a metal model. And it's like a guy just, it was like rubbing it. He's, he was using it as a play piece and just, just oh. grabbing on it. And so did you, did you repair it or you do something else? What's that? Did you fix it or did you just do enter something else? I fixed it up. It, yeah. was, it was still it was still worth fixing and it, it won a best in category at the P3. Oh, well, nice. Has anyone ever entered one of your miniatures that they commissioned to you as if they painted it themselves? No, nah, not that I've heard of. That would be a terrible thing to do. That, no, it's awesome. That is, you guys don't think like I do. I mean, come on. You're paying oh, there are people that think like 200 that. bucks, and you win 500 bucks. I mean, it's just how the world works. Or there's people that have done that for non-cash prizes. Yeah? Yeah, I was I was judge at uh, Nova Open, and I was tipped off. They're like, yeah, that guy's here. He was here last year, and he won. And then we had to, like, rearrange the awards because... Why would you do that? I, why would you want a Super Bowl ring if you never played in the Super Bowl? Maybe that's a maybe that's a terrible example, but like, you get what I'm saying. Like, I know I, I, I do want this ribbon for, for ethically, what? Ethically, you I, never did. I thought it was a fun question. It's a fun question, guys. This is oh, it's funny. It, yeah, there are 
So many kinds uh, of people out there. So 2020, we only have a, we can run a little late, but whatever. But uh, 2020, there's been a lot of changes. So I, I kind of wanted to talk for a couple of minutes about your routine to kind of give people an idea. And if you had to make any pivots because of all of the changes that we see other than missing me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get my, my like twice, thrice a year dose of Matthew. Um, long hug. It's there have been three or four times I've had to stop, pivot, and re-examine. So I started uh, the year having 12 events booked for myself. I had my schedule all the way into um, uh, September of this year. And then when COVID hit, I had I had to cancel all that and refund everyone their money. I lost money in the process, but I'm not going to keep, you know, I lost about $5 a person. Every class I, I refund, I lose sure. 60 to 80 bucks, you know, 15, 20 people signed up. Yeah, your your classes, I've got, um, here, I'll, I'll, I'll pop it up. Like, I'll pop up your, like, they're usually pretty full, man. Like, like I yeah. see this stuff in your, in your blog here. Like, yeah, that's that's a good amount of people there to, to, to learn. So yeah, that, that was a big class. Like those 23 people. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Dev helped me out. Oh, I'm so glad that I have a blog. So I can remember what was going on outside of that as well. It's like a sure. little uh, life journal, but yeah, yeah. That, that means a lot to me to, yeah. Make friends with cops and dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, you know, you can, you can be underneath power or you can get on top of it and run the system. <laughs> uh, I chose to surf in, on top of the waves of chaos as a true barbarian would do. Um, so you had, so you had, so your big thing is you had to cancel classes and you were, I mean, you like the teaching aspect of this stuff now. Yes. The last couple of years. I love it, man. That's one of the most beautiful things to share because it's, it's come around. I, the, I think my, my, the best moment that has happened was at the last Adepticon, this uh, guy comes up to me and he's like, my son watches all your videos. He paints, blah, blah, blah. Here he is. He had to make the introduction for his son because his son's eight years old. And he comes up with a model that he painted. And I'm like, that's awesome. We took a picture. And then he placed in the Youngbloods category. Ooh, cool. I was, I was so happy. That, that's giving, that just gives me such good feelings. Um, so it's, it's, that was nice to know. Um, but yeah, I had to, I had to cancel all my classes, refund everything. I started a Patreon, which is now doing better than the travel and the classes. God, I'm so experienced at, with airports. Um, I was road dogging it, man. There were times last year when I'd fly from like coast to coast in the same month. And I figured it would be more of rest top experienced than airport experienced. Yeah, yeah, the, the John Madden tour bus is, it's still on the vision board. I'd love to be just driving across the country eating turkey legs. I could see you getting an RV. I could see it, man. I could oh, that has, crossed, that has crossed my mind multiple times to just live like the all gas, no brakes guy. <laughs> just, all right, I'm just slowly making a circle around the US. I'll be here, I can do private lessons and classes put, put some solar panels on the top paint mo you know mobile painting studio on the side oh my god i love a this few, a yeah. few bullet holes for for good measure yeah yeah totally speed holes mm -hmm. like a bit of a whistler going down the highway to my next destination sure you can get those in wisconsin <laughs> oh yeah i can find some bullet holes uh, Easy to pick some of those up on. We'll, we'll find you in some parts of Wisconsin. Um, so, you're so you you kind of you you still eighty percent of your time was spent painting at home though. So really, the main the main thing that you had to change is how you get to the public. Yes. And, yeah, and you're, there's no there's no awards to win now. Really, I mean, there's some online stuff. Are you doing any of those? No. Uh, I might, uh, Roman is having this thing with the little astronauts. If you've seen it, Roman Lapot, people will know, will know, but he has these, 
it's competition for these tiny astronauts and people are putting them in all kinds of cool situations. And I have so much to paint, but I got one of those tiny astronauts, we'll see. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I also, so I got kicked out of my house. Um, which, which, which hurts me. Two, I two months ago at, at random. You know, and it wasn't like some coronavirus eviction thing. It was just my friend just not being my friend, just being a dick. So I had to find a new place to move. So I had to cancel my Twitch stream, which was on the up, is doing really well. Um, I think that's actually what kicked me into making a Patreon. <laughs> but yeah, so many times, yeah, I just had to like stop what I'm doing and figure something else out. And it's been like, more well, times than ever this year. I'll say this is every single time, and I've, and I've known you for a while, and I've seen you kind of roll with the punches where it is every single time that something was eliminated from your life, you've always replaced it in, in, in short form. So, I mean, I think that's probably the takeaway from Sam Lenz's career thus far is that like you're basically like you need to be a survivor in this industry or lucky. And I yeah. think you've shown us the survivor template, man. So uh, thanks, Patreon's man. working out well for you is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's doing very well. I don't have to travel as much. Once things open up, I, I will. I still want to do a European tour. Mm. Um, and I've been able to make so many friends across the world through this hobby. It's, it's uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, man. Thanks. You need to take me on that European tour. I'll be your manager. Oh, please. Please, man. I need to go back to England and yeah. I love that. All the other spots. So Sam, what's the best? Um, well, also one thing I want to know, what, what, what do you, what have you been listening to while you've been painting these days? Like what's, what's on heavy rotation in the, the lens mance? Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, larger characters, like 75, 90 millimeter models. Um, I also, I do play. I have a Stormcast army. Yeah, Star Drake is all done. Yeah, great, great footage, I'm sure. But you get the idea. Um, I. That's funny you ask because I just hit this moment now. We're like, okay, this army is done. My first instinct was to start another one, but also, like, maybe I should uh, put my focus on other kinds of art because it's not like I'm playing this army. I'm just gonna have two armies to to mm -hmm. play. When it's all done. Um, so yeah, I've been starting to make some more illustrations. Um, and yeah, I, I need to once again, challenge myself a lot harder with miniatures. You know, you need to keep like every, every model I work on, everything that, that you get is a chance to experiment and you need to keep trying to break out of the box because for too long it was, I'm very good and I'm performing at this level. Like you need to try to perform above your level. So I'm kind of trying to, to clear the table a little bit and try some things that are that are very, very challenging. And you don't want to be the man in the box because Allison Chains was god awful. So <laughs> yeah. And what what do you, so there's two things I want from you right now. What are you listening to, Sam Lenz, while while you're busting out these cool these sweet dragons? And how do we follow you? How do we get more Sam Lenz content? Throw us your socials. All right, Sam Lenz artwork on everything, uh, except for Instagram, where he, I'm Samson Osmus. It's a little, it's a palindrome of Samson. But it's, but, but it's not. It's, <laughs> it kind of is. But what do you you're, mean? You're forcing a palindrome, like a, that's like a race car is a palindrome. But like you're just adding something so it becomes a palindrome. Well, yeah, like I guess I am <laughs> forcing it. It's like the word mom is the same. Or is it, no one's ever challenged me on this. How dare you? <laughs> I did not consent to be recorded. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, Too late I, I love you, man, but it's, it's kind of like you gave yourself your own nickname right there. I'm, I'm not going to hear you, so. It, well, I've been Samson for a while. Yeah. yeah you. you can, oh, you can find me out there, all right? Or don't. Don't even look for me. <laughs> what was the other question? What are you rocking to right now, man? Oh, okay. So it's either war metal, like uh, Curophagium. Abysmal okay. Lord, Diocletian, Archgoat, 
Um, but there's also chill music, like Russian guitar. Just look up Russian guitar from the 1800s. It's yeah. amazing. I like a lot of ambient tracks, a lot of dungeon synth. That just sounds like it's soundtracks to fantasy movies that haven't been made yet. That's pretty much what good dungeon synth is to me. I listen to a lot of stuff that could have been a uh, John Carpenter soundtrack. I understand. Yes. That. yes. So. And I usually I start the mornings with something uh, like 70s rock, like Yes or Uriah Heep. Okay. That's little, kind of little, general kind of. Little Uriah yeah. Heep in your, in your coffee. Okay. Yeah. Um, Josh, you got anything other than a hug for Sam? No, no. I mean, I, I, uh, I think that we're all looking forward to seeing each other in person again someday when not it's me. not deadly. Yeah. No. Um, it's <laughs> that's it's shaking in though. Wisconsin right now too. So don't. Oh, did we lose? Sam? It's funny you're you're kind of pinging now, Sam. So, Sam, thanks for your uh, your time today, man. If if any if if no one said I love you today, then let me be to be a first. So. Oh, thanks. You're the second, but I love you too. I saw Brooke today, so. <laughs> yep, she's we're the one person standing in the way. Brooke one of these days, but yeah. So yeah, check out Sam's stuff. <laughs> uh, he's. I mean, your, your YouTube tutorials are super helpful. They're beyond me painting wise, but they're still fun to watch. So, uh, I, I, you've got to, you throw good character in it. Like they're entertaining regardless. Um, whether you're looking to, because I'm not web, I'm not web blending or anything anything i'm everything is beyond me and i'm okay. i love that that wet blending is the new buzzword it's so good yeah. what's that wet is blending it? is the new like buzzword in painting that that people think is uh hard and i know it's like it's sure, like, it's like, it's like a, a layer of paint down it's it's a slightly advanced but yeah yeah it's I, can, I can show advanced. you anything you want to see buddy <laughs> all right we'll, we'll we'll make our own personal video that we'll never make it to youtube <laughs> But uh, Sam, thanks for your time tonight, man. And uh, like, uh, just to echo Josh's sentiment, I hope to be seeing you soon. Yeah, I, Dragonfall should be able to happen next year, the way things are going. So I hope so. Love that. I hope to. Uh, thanks for having me, and I hope to uh, see you guys next year. All right, man. Thank you.